So I'll be speaking on newer molecules in diabetic kidney disease, and I'll be concentrating on phenylalanine. So as you are aware, diabetic kidney disease is one of the major causes of mortality and morbidity in people with type 2 diabetes. And if you look at the two of the main drivers of or markers of diabetic kidney disease, one is the UACR and other is the EGFR. And you can see from this large database of more than 10 lakh patients that both these parameters, as they increase, are independently associated with increased risk of cardiovascular events, a reduction in EGFR or an increase in UACR. And historically, we never really had good molecules for controlling diabetic kidney disease, and for that matter, CKD. Years from that, we first had both ACE inhibitors, and later we had the ARBs, which could reduce heart renal endpoints, or rather prevent the progression of diabetic kidney disease to end-stage renal disease and requirement of renal replacement therapy. And over a period of many years hence after that, in by 2017-18, we started having SGLT2 inhibitors, which was found in various trials, CVOT trials, and also in a committed trial of credence to improve renal outcomes in people with diabetic kidney disease. And now we have phenarenone in the Fidelio DKD study to show to, to prove that it can also reduce the risk of renal disease progression. If you look at the previous data from trials like the renal, which looked at Losata, you see that there is always a residual risk of renal disease, even in people are when people are optimally blocked with a ARB. And when it came to studies like Credence and DAPA CKD, despite using a renin angiotensin aldosterone inhibitor like uh, a ARB and an SGLT2 inhibitor like canaglyphosin or dapaglyphosin, we still continue to have a residual risk of disease progression in these people. And we need to look at why that is happening. So till now, we have been looking at or we have been targeting the hemodynamic aspects by using, by reducing the blood pressure or by reducing the intraglomerular, blood, intraglomerular pressure with the use of ACE inhibitors, with the use of antihypertensives or with the use of SGLT2 inhibitors. We also have worked on the metabolic part in terms of good glycemic control with the use of various molecules like uh, uh, various antihyperglycemic agents, SGL2 inhibitors, and GLP-1 RAs. But one area which was left untouched was the final common pathway of inflammation and fibrosis for which no particular therapy was available till now. But we know that inflammation and fibrosis is primarily driven by the mineralocorticoid receptor activation which leads on to kidney diseases and heart diseases. In both the kidney and the heart, there is an increased expression of pro-inflammatory and pro-fibrotic factors, which can lead on to inflammation and fibrosis. And when you block the metallocorticoid receptor overactivation by the use of drugs which can block it, you in fact lead on to prevention of these complications. Now, phenarenone is a novel non-steroidal selective mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist. It's a bulky non-steroidal molecule, which basically gets attached to the mineralocorticoid receptor. And what it does is that it modifies the specific gene expression. So instead of molecules like steroidal drugs like aldosterone inhibitors like spironolactone, this results in a very defect different selective and a potent change in terms of gene expression, primarily affecting the antifibrotic and anti-inflammatory effects, unlike spironolactone, which generally affects the hemodynamic effects. Now, this is a new chapter in the management of CKD in people with type 2 diabetes. Now, let us look at the studies where phenarenone has been used. So these are data from preclinical studies of phenarenone in preclinical models of disease. So the first slide is looking, trying to look at uh, how the drug has been effective in terms of reducing inflammation and fibrosis in kidney disease in preclinical models. And the second slide is primarily to look at how a potent uh, inhibition of mineralocorticoid receptor action can 
inhibit inflammation and fibrosis in cardiac tissue. So both these places, phenylalanine has been found to be beneficial. Now there has been a phase two programs, multiple phase two programs, but I'm not going into the details of this phase two programs uh, named as ARDS. But basically what it has shown is that it has shown a reduction in UACR at around 38 percentage, around five millimeter drop in systolic blood pressure. And in comparison to spironolactone, a smaller increase in potassium. And in people with CKD stage three at baseline, you could see that the potassium increase was there even with phenylalanine, but approximately 0.1 to 0.3 millimole. And the EGFR decline, which you would see in patients when they start, get started on SGL2 inhibitors or ARBs, does happen on people who are on phenylalanine also. And that is in the magnitude of three to four ml per minute. So these are the sort of basic coverage of the entire phase two programs, uh, which led on to the drug development. Now, coming to the phase three program. So phase three programs are Fidelio DKD, Figaro DKD, and Fidelity DKD. Fidelity DKD is, in fact, a compilation of all this data together. So I won't be touching that. I'll be looking at Fidelio DKD and Figaro, Figaro DKD. Now, if you look at the drugs which are currently available to treat chronic kidney disease progression in people with diabetes or without diabetes, you can see that as a combined group, Figaro and Fidelio, in fact, easily has a higher number of patients enrolled, more than uh, 13,000 patients enrolled in this group of trials in comparison to other data. You can see the renal, the INDT, the credence, which had around 4,400 patients. In comparison to DAPA CKD, which has around 4,300, and MPA kidney, which has got around 6,000 patients. So the, the Figaro Fidelio combination data, in fact, has produced very robust outcomes in terms of how Phineron can reduce the risk of kidney disease progression. Now, just to look through the summary of these two clinical trials, basically, both these clinical trials are phase three trials, and they are done in a very similar pattern. The type of patients who are enrolled into these trials are also very similar. These are patients with diabetic kidney disease. I'll come to that definition for later. But basically, the Fidelio DKD study looked at a composite renal outcome, whereas the Figaro DKD study, the primary outcome was primarily cardiovascular. So this is the essential difference between a Fidelio CKD study and Fidelio DKD study, although the inclusion criteria has got minor differences, uh, uh, which, which again does reflect in the sort of outcomes that you have. Now, a bit more depth into the Fidelio DKD study. So basically, the key inclusion criteria include people with type 2 diabetes and chronic kidney, defined, kidney disease defined as a USCR between 30 to 300 and EGFR between 25 to 60 with a history of diabetic retinopathy. Or if you had more severe proteinuria like 300 to 5000 milligram per gram and your EGFR is 25 to 75, then you don't need a diabetic retinopathy for uh, inclusion in the study. These studies were done on people with optimal AC inhibitor or IRA inhibition already and potassium less than 4.8 millimole at baseline and screening visits. So this is a time you should realize that this study started off at a time when SGLT2 inhibitors were not in regular use for diabetic kidney disease. And in these trials, less than 10% of patients were exposed to SGLT2 inhibitors. So these are only a very small subgroup of SGLT2 inhibitors patients are there in this trial. The primary outcome in this trial is time to onset of kidney failure. Sustained decrease of EGFR more than 40%. That is the time to onset of kidney failure from baseline or death due to kidney disease. So, sustained reduction of EGFR, requirement of end stage, or reaching end stage renal disease or death due to kidney disease was the primary outcome. Now, coming to the Figaro DKD study, again, a very similar inclusion criteria. Patients should be again be on optimal ACE inhibitors or IRB dosage, and potassium should be less than 4.8 to be included in your trial. But here, the outcome is a bit different. The outcome is a time to CV death, non-fatal MI, 
non-fatal stroke or hospitalization for heart failure. And we know that in people with chronic kidney disease and diabetes, cardiac events are possibly one of the most important outcomes that we need to look at. Now coming to the efficacy and safety outcomes. So on top of maximum, this is data from the Fidelio DKD study to show that on top of maximum tolerated RAS therapy, phenarenone significantly reduced the primary kidney outcomes by 18%. So end-stage renal disease defined as EGFR less than 15 ml or requirement of uh, renal replacement therapy or transplantation. Sustained EGFR reduction of more than 40% from baseline or renal death. This is the outcome which was reduced by 18% in the Fidelio DKD study. Now coming to the Figaro study, Figaro DKD study, the primary composite outcome was time to CV death, non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke or hospitalization for heart failure, which was again reduced by 13% in people who were randomized to phenarenone in comparison to the placebo. That is, this primary cardiovascular outcome was reduced in these patients. And this was primarily driven by a reduction in hospitalization for heart failure. Now, when it comes to any mineral corticoid receptor antagonist, the major concern is in terms of risk of hyperkalemia. And there are very clear data in the phase two trials to show that this risk is substantially lower than that of spironolactone. And if you can see this, both the trials, the Fidelio DKD study and the Figaro DKD study, any hyperkalemia was reported in people up to 18 percentage, which was around 11 percentage attributed to the study drug. And drug discontinuation was in around 2.3 percentage in comparison to placebo is around 0.9 percentage. Similarly, in the Figaro DKD, any hyperkalemia was around 10.8 percentage. And hyperkalemia leading on to discontinuation was around 1.2 percentage. So there is definitely hyperkalemia. There were no serious events, severe events or deaths due to hyperkalemia. And around 1 to 2 percent of patients had to be discontinued because of the hyperkalemia in the study. There was a modest effect on blood pressure. I showed you in the phase two data around up to 5 millimeter drop in blood pressure with 20 milligram. A1C levels were not affected. Weight was not affected. There's no increase in kidney injury between the groups and sexual side effects like gynecomastia and irregular periods were balanced between mm -hmm. the groups. So this is a summary of both these trials that Fidelio DKD and the Figaro DKD studies. Both the CKD progression and CV mortality and morbidity were reduced. Now let us come to the last three slides in terms of key guideline recommendations for the use of phenarenone. In July 2021, FDA approval was, of phenarenone was there, and February 2022, the EU approval is there. So basically, it is used to reduce the risk of kidney disease progression, cardiovascular death, non-fatal MI, or hospitalization for heart failure in people with kidney disease and type 2 diabetes. And similar indication uh, in the EU, but only for the chronic kidney disease part. Now, when it comes to EGFR, based dosing. If the EGFR is less than 25, it is not recommended. 25 to 60 ml, 10 milligram per day, and more than 60 ml, 20 milligram per day. The 2022 ADA guidelines also have updated the use of phenarenone. For chronic kidney disease, it is in the use of for people with increased risk of kidney disease progression or cardiovascular events. And or who are unable to use SGL2 inhibitor, a, a, a mineral non steroidal mineral corticoid receptor antagonist phenarenone is recommended to reduce both CKD progression and cardiovascular events. And for cardiovascular risk management, yeah, again, phenarenone is used to improve cardiovascular outcomes in people with type 2 diabetes and CKD. And finally, the KDGO 2022 guidelines also have given a very similar suggestion. But with an add on that SGLT inhibitor should be the first add on before adding a non steroidal MRA for type 2 diabetes and CKD. And when you use an MRA, you should be using an MRA with documented kidney or cardiovascular benefits like phenarenone. To summarize, it's a, phenarenone is a mineral corticoid receptor antagonist 
It acts primarily by blocking the neurocorticoid receptor associated fibrosis and inflammatory pathways. It produces less hyperkalemia and no gonadosteroid related adverse effects. Reduces progression of diabetic kidney disease. Reduces CV mortality and morbidity. And approved for the use in people with diabetic kidney disease with EGFR more than 25 ml per minute without hyperkalemia. Thank you very much.